name is Dr. Rick Sigill. I'm and action. Hey, uh, Jay had a... This is Kirk to them. And action. Hey, everyone. It's Dr. Rick from Herbal 411. And um, Dr. Mel had a... She didn't, have a, she didn't have a question, she had a statement that I thought I would expound upon about uh, muscle cramps with exercise. And if this is the first time you're, whoops, I didn't put it. If this is the first time you're finding me, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the alert button to find out when I do new videos. Also, if you have any other uh, up and coming middle-aged athletes, send this to them. They might understand how important it is to be tolerant and keep on going with regards to the entry back into exercise. So uh, the statement was that there was a lot of cramping after a competition. And for those of you who are trying to break into an exercise routine in middle age, it's tough uh, because number one, we don't have that much time. Number two, you got to get these old bones moving. So if you do have some athleticism from before, I do believe that muscle has a memory and myochondria, myochondrial biosynthesis can reoccur, I think, pretty, pretty easy. It just has to be turned on again. Uh, when the muscles don't get utilized, the mitochondria and the muscle size decreases. Kind of like when you put your arm in a cast, um, you'll find that after about a week to two weeks, it gets real skinny. If, the, um, if a person is kept in um, a, a pair on a pair of crutches for about a week, the quad muscle is said to decrease its size and strength by 20%. So that's why it's very important to keep up with it. If you're just breaking into it, it's okay. But do expect that it's going to be a little tough. So you, you got to get your mind straight because you might be able to say, oh, I can run this, but you're going to pay for it later. Either as far as severe cramping, a, delay, a terribly delayed onset muscle soreness, or an injury because you're kind of running from memory and you're going to be walking or running funny and you're going to overuse something. So <clears throat> back to the muscle cramping. I'm going to explain lactic acid development because I think this is what causes my hikers to hit the wall after a certain amount of time. I've done this when I first started hiking. I think I would hit it at about nine miles. Severe muscle cramps, couldn't go any further and it never turned me around from a hike, a big hike, but during training, I would hit the wall. So muscle cramps, uh, uh, irritation, numbness, and tingling, sometimes even just plain old pain, uh, inability to even lift up the leg. So uh, if it happens to you, it certainly could be um, magnesium deficiency or dehydration, but I think this is the number one reason. I'm gonna explain it here. This looks a little busy, and this is a return to biochemistry. So those of you that are still watching because you didn't turn it off, here you go. So uh, what usually happens in the cell is that you take glucose, uh, that's from your liver and the form of glycogen or something you just ate if you don't eat too much crap, and the glucose gets converted uh, through glycolysis into pyruvate, and you let go of two ATP. Uh, adenosine triphosphate or ATP are the energy packets that you can make to fuel muscle to do what it has to do, contract. Now pyruvate, if there's a lot of oxygen around, and that's relatively speaking because we'll all breathe. But if you're getting to the point, like I was at the Planet Fitness a little, a little while ago, and I was talking to one of my old partners, um, and I was talking like this, trying to get out a sentence, because uh, I just did a set of exercises. And that's perceived exertion. Um, and usually if you get to the point where you're like that, you're breaking your sentences up, I think that's proper but that could also be the beginning of your exercise routine if you're just starting out and you'll be really winded like just with one repetition. So if that's the case, have no fear, dial it down a little bit, build up some tolerance. But when that happens, sometimes what will happen is if you are not, if your VO2 max or the amount of maximum oxygen at the amount of maximum exertion is kind of on the low side because you're just starting out, you will hit technically anaerobic, uh, uh, anaerobic energy at that point in time or anaerobic uh, muscle contraction at that point in time. That's when, for whatever reason, the, the, the circulatory system isn't that great at extracting oxygen out of your lungs or the muscles not, hasn't built up enough mitochondria at that point in time or 
are you just dehydrated? So there's a couple different reasons, but then you go into anaerobic metabolism and lactic acid builds up. Lactic acid is the thing that makes the blood a little acidic. It's good. I mean, you can use it temporarily till it gets back to the liver to be converted back into glucose. But uh, during that time, it starts to build and build. You'll have a little tolerance, achiness, burning. But then if you hit your threshold, it's called lactic acid threshold or lact lactate threshold. And once you go over that, uh, everything, it's almost like a built-in uh, default mode. Uh, muscles just shut down. So you don't, know for, you don't do any further damage. Um, so at that point in time, because you don't, the body tells the mind and the muscle, don't, we're backing up, don't go any further, we're really going to have some severe cramping and uh, we have to rebuild again. So that's the way the, the blood system, the body system, muscle, and the, the liver tells the body to hold. Now you can build up and tolerate lactic acid uh, amounts by continuing to exercise just a little bit. So that's why it's important to keep on training. You have to know your limitations, and in some pe in some cases, people who are either ex-athletes and are trying too hard, or people who don't know what to do, might be dissuaded because they just hated that cramping thing. You cramp at the gym, you cramp driving home, you cramp that night, and from then on, it's like I'm not gonna do this again. This sucks. So it's it's discouraging if you don't know what's going on. That's why it's nice to have a personal trainer keep eyes on you and say, okay, that's it, stop. Let's uh, do something easy, cool down. I'll see you in a couple of days. So if you, you try to do it on your own and you keep on hitting that lactic acid threshold and you go over it, it's a bad experience. So um, this is my typical model. This is what usually is referred to as a cell. This is the nucleus, the endoplasmic reticula. These guys here are the mitochondria. Now, glucose uh, conversion happens over here, but if, you're, if you've got enough oxygen, if you're well ventilated, if you're not a smoker, if you don't have COPD, if you don't have asthma, then usually what will happen is the pyruvate goes from here instead of anaerobically. It doesn't go this way, but it goes this way into aerobic. So if you have aerobic or cellular respiration, you actually can convert this through the Krebs cycle, using the mitochondria, through the Krebs cycle into more energy, through the electron transport chain into more energy. That's supposed to be a smiling mitochondria right there. So you make more ATP, you make more ATP, and there you go, it's great. That's if you're breathing properly, if you don't smoke, if you have a very well-tuned cardiovascular system, if your VO2 max is really high, you can tolerate a lot, uh, with as little oxygen as needed, uh, but that again happens with training. In some cases, like Lance Armstrong, you'll have genetics, but uh, for the average Joe that I see, average Joe and Jane, we have to build into that and have a little tolerance. So that's where that happens, Krebs cycle and electron transport chain to be eventually converted back to more glucose, which is cool. So uh, it's okay if you don't have enough oxygen and the muscles are really fatiguing out, or there's not enough mitochondria because you haven't been doing enough exercise just yet. I think that it, the more exercise you do, the mic, more stimulation you have to build more mitochondria, and the more mitochondria, this just has two, but imagine if this had six. With training, I think you can stimulate mitochondrial synthesis, and uh, it's kind of cool. The theory is that um, mitochondria are actually Adopted, from, adopted way back when from some other organism that knew, this is supposed to be an organism, but we adopted it, we pulled it in, we put it into our cells, and we had cellular respiration, So, which is cool. But if you can uh, build up a tolerance uh, with all the signals of your exercise, you'll build up more mitochondria, you'll be more efficient in creating and continuing with converting this way, uh, glucose to pyruvate, and then pyruvate to more ATP. So. Glucose to pyruvate, you have two ATP. Pyruvate to the Krebs cycle and electron transport chain, you have even more ATP. Versus being anaerobic, not in shape yet, and then going straight from the two ATP back to the liver, and that's it. You'll have a little bit more extra, um, extra energy production, it's a very limited, and again, it takes a little bit of time. If your liver is in shape, it can convert back to glucose fast, but for those of you who take too much alcohol, I put all the bad stuff here. Uh, you have to have a clean liver. So if you take too much alcohol, eat too much sugar. And I'm not talking about glucose, I'm talking about sugar. Sugar, which is the stuff you're not supposed to be having. Usually you'll find it as an active ingredient, uh, an extra ingredient in uh, processed food. 
uh, but sugar gets broken into glucose and um, fructose, and that's crap. Uh, fructose is crap. Can't really use it for energy. Uh, also, if you go really carb heavy or excessive amounts of calories, then the liver is going to be really busy. So if the liver is busy, the the, this is the this is the late, rate limiting step, and you have just a buildup of lactic acid. It's, it's too busy. It's too screwed up. It says I'm not going to turn turn this lactic acid into glucose. It just say take back seat, and that's when you usually hit the wall. So you got to keep your liver. Even if you do go into a little bit, you push a little hard and you go into anaerobic metabolism. As you get well trained, and you can always push hard enough if you have a coach or if your fortitude is strong and your goals are set. Push hard enough, just enough to feel it, but not have too much of a pain or experience pain. You'll get your lactic acid tolerance a little higher. When it gets higher, you can actually tolerate a higher level. Or more importantly, if your VO2 max is increased, improved, uh, then you'll be able to stop the shunt here and just do a lot of this. This is what we want. That's when you have a very well-trained, say, endurance athlete, um, a 100 miler, triathlete. Uh, sometimes I'd say even with CrossFit patients, uh, it's tough to do what they do. So we want this as much as possible. Now, how do we get this? Number one, you have a very good circulatory and respiratory system. Number two, you try to develop as many mitochondria as possible, training, exercise. And number three, you try to get a very high VO2 max. Again, training and exercise and avoiding crap. Uh, also, if you happen to go into develop a little bit lactic acid, if you have an efficient liver, again, for clarification, try to decrease on the alcohol, try to decrease on the sugars, try to decrease on the total carbs and uh, calories per day, and that'll get us a really good cycle. So I think if the cycle is working, we don't feel any cramps. You can push harder, you can recuperate faster and train again. If you feel cramps, that's eh, okay, it's just the beginning. But like uh, my friend Dr. Mel is doing, she's trying to, uh, I mean, uh, being a doctor, being a mom, being a parent, uh, being a, a spouse, I think we have a lot on our shoulders. So as much as possible, to try to exercise with a little uh, taking away, uh, as little taking away from the family time as, as we can, but maximizing on our efforts to keep on pushing. Because I really think that if you have a decent amount of muscle, you will be able to live better later. Because I think this really breaks disease, also decreases the onset of other problems that are coming with age, um, osteoporosis, uh, sarcopenia, or muscle wasting. Uh, I think if you have a great circulation, you'll have to tol you'll be able to tolerate and chew up a lot of the foods that you're normally not going to be able to tolerate. So altogether, I think it's just better. But that hopefully will give you an explanation. Those of you who are um, kind of on the fence about why you're cramping up or why you can't get past a certain um, wall. Uh, just try to get yourself a trainer, hang in there. Please, if you uh, can, share this with other people who are kind of wondering why they're going through this ache and pain of breaking in and uh, just hang in there. Hopefully you don't hurt too much, but uh, with other videos I'm gonna put out, uh, using the right uh, sources of rehabilitation, um, regeneration, uh, refeeding, you'll be able to uh, shorten the amount of time it takes to get to your level.